Today we're going to solve equations. An equation occurs when two algebraic expressions are set equal to each other. A value that makes the equality true is the solution to the equation. Algebraic expressions can be as simple as just being a number. So I could throw in 5 or 6 or 7. That could be one side of the equation. The other side might have a variable. We'll keep it pretty easy. There won't be any powers or anything in here, so we'll keep everything power 1 so I won't have squared or square root. Then I'll just give different examples of what an equation could look like and we'll solve a bunch. So as we go to solve an equation, there's some basic steps that we want to do. And the most important thing is that we always do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So this means if you add a number to one side, you need to add it to the other side as well. That's also true for subtraction, multiplication, and division. Just be consistent. So let's start pretty easy. I have x plus 3 is 15. What I want you to think is do the opposite. And what do I mean by opposite? I have x plus 3. So the opposite of plus 3 would be minus 3. So when I subtract 3 from the left, I will also subtract 3 from the right. The 3's cancel, so now I have x, 15 minus 3 is 12. Let's try that again. Here I have y minus 8 is negative 12. This time I have subtraction, so the opposite is going to be addition. So I will be adding 8 to both sides of the equation. On the left, I have y because the 8's cancel. Negative 12 plus 8 gives me negative 4. Here I have 3x is 18, and I notice the 3 and the x are being multiplied. So I think, well, what's the opposite of multiplication? It would be division. So let's divide both sides by 3. That tells me x is 6. I have negative 2m equals 42. Doesn't matter that it's a negative 2. I'm still going to divide because the two, negative 2 and the m were being multiplied. When I divide, this gives me m is negative 21. This time I have x over 4 is 7. To get rid of the 4, I'm going to multiply the left side by 4 and the right side by 4. The 4 cancels on the left. Now I have x. 7 times 4 is 28. Same thing's going to happen if I have t over 3 is equal to negative 8. I think instead of dividing by 3, I would like to multiply by 3. The 3's cancel. t is negative 24. On purpose, I'm switching the variables just to say it doesn't matter what letter I give you. It could be x, y, t, s, w, whatever it is. We still do the same operations. Now I make it a little bit bigger. I have x minus 4 over 5 is equal to 3. So I have multiple things that need to be done. I first want to take care of this 5. Multiply the left, multiply the right. On the left, it cancels. Now I have x minus 4. 3 times 5 is 15. Now that the x minus 4 isn't part of a fraction anymore, I know I can add 4 to both sides, and x is 19. This one, I have 8 times x plus 3 is 35. So we do want to kind of look at, well, what do I want to do when I'm trying to solve? Like, what should I move first? I will first want to move this 3. I want to get to the 8x, but I need to isolate it before I divide. So I'm going to subtract the 3. And in order to have 8x is 32. Now that the x part is by itself, I can divide by 8, which gives me x is 4. Again, back to a fraction. I have x plus 5 over 2 is equal to negative 4. And what I want you thinking about is, well, should I first subtract 5 or should I multiply by 2? And the answer is you multiply by 2. I want to clear that fraction before I try to move the 5 over. So the left side I multiply by 2. The right side I do the same thing. 2's cancel on the left. I have x plus 5 is negative 8. I subtract 5. I get negative 13. Making it a little bit bigger, I have 2 over 5 times x plus 3 is 7. Again, it's that idea. Can I get the x by itself? And I can because I can move the 3. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Now I have 2 fifths of x. 7 minus 3 is 4. You can pick how many steps you want to do this in. Um, I'm going to try to make it kind of quick and easy. I want to do the opposite of 2 over 5, which is 5 over 2. I need that on both sides. Flipping it, that way the 2's cancel, the 5's cancel, the left side I have x. On the right side, you can grab your calculator, you can plug it in that way. You could say 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 times 5 is 10, like lots of choices to get that answer. Here I have 4x plus 1 over 5 equals negative 3. Think about what would you do first. 
Hopefully you said, oh, I'm going to multiply by 5. Make sure you cross it out on the left. Don't multiply it. I have 4x plus 1 equals negative 15. Now I can move the 1. And as I move it, I'm subtracting it. That says 4x is negative 16. And then our final step is to divide by 4. That gives me negative 4. Here's one with two fractions. So I have a 1 half of x and I have a 1 third of x equals 5. So I have two numbers I need to get rid of. I need to get rid of the 2 from the 1 half. I need to get rid of the 3 from the 1 third. Well, think about this. What if I just get rid of both of them at the same time? And how am I going to do that? If I'm going to multiply by 2 and I'm going to multiply by 3, that says we can multiply by 6. Think about how you do math and figure out what works best for you. So you could put a 6 on each side. Just make sure you remember to distribute. So if you think you're going to forget to distribute, it may be better to just start at this step where you do 6 times 1 half of x, 6 times a third of x, and then the 6 times 5. So a half of 6 is 3, so I have 3x. A third of 6 is 2, I have 2x. And then 5 times 6 is 30. I'm going to add the 3x and the 2x. Remember, you just add the front numbers. I don't do anything to the x except keep them. So 3x and 2x is 5x. That's 30. And then I want to divide by 5. That tells me x is equal to 6. In this one, I have 3x plus 5x minus 2 on the left and just 14 on the right. Now this time, before I start moving things around, I notice that 3x and 5x can be combined because they're like terms. So 3x plus 5x gives me 8x minus 2 is 14. Well, let's go ahead and add 2 to both sides. Now 8x is 16. And then I can divide by 8, so x is 2. I have 3x plus 11 and 7x minus 5, so I have an x on the left, I have an x on the right, and I want them both to be together. I'm going to bring the 7x over to the left, so I like to have my variables on the left side of the equation. 3x minus 7x is negative 4x, and I have plus 11 equals negative 5. I'll subtract 11. Negative 4x is negative 16, and then divide by negative 4. Now remember, a negative over a negative is a positive, so negative 16 over negative 4, my answer is positive 4. In this equation, I do have some decimals, so it's going to get a little bit stickier, but not a problem because we have our calculator. So I have 12 times 3.2 plus w equals 148 times 4.8 minus w. Step 1 is going to be distribute both sides. So I have 12 times 3.2 is 38.4 plus 12w, and then I have 148 times 4.8 is 710.4 minus 148w. So we need to pay attention to variables versus numbers. So my variable part is the 12w and the 148w. I'm going to move the 148w over to the left by adding it. So I still have the 38.4. And then when you add 148 and 12, you're going to get 160. It's still W. And I have the 710.4 still on the right. So let's move that 38.4 by subtracting it. 710.4 minus 38.4 gives me 672. We're going to divide now by 160. So I have 672 divided by 160 gives me 4.2. I have x over 5 minus 2 equals x over 4 minus 3. And my first thought is I got to get rid of the 5, I got to get rid of the 4. Luckily, 5 and 4 don't really have anything in common, so the only thing I can do is multiply 5 times 4. So 5 times 4 is 20, so I'm going to do 20 times x over 5. Make sure you also do 20 times 2. Then I have 20 times x over 4 minus 20 times 3. So I'm distributing, I'm giving every single piece of the equation this multiple of 20. Remember we said we want to be consistent. 5 goes into 20 4 times. My first term is 4x. Then I have 20 times 2, so that's minus 40. 4 goes into 20 5 times, so I have 5x on the right. And then 20 times 3, I have minus 60. 
I'm going to bring the 5x over. I'm subtracting. So 4x minus 5x is negative x minus 40 is negative 60. We are going to add the 40 to both sides. That way we can get the x alone. Now it says negative x is negative 20. We never want to leave it that way. I don't want to know what negative x is. I want to know what x is. Negative x equals negative 20. You can divide by negative 1 or multiply by negative 1, but we want to get rid of that negative. We want to make it positive. So negative x over negative 1 is x. Negative 20 over negative 1 is 20.